Guide catheter extensions are very useful tools that can facilitate delivering balloons or stents across calcified lesions and diffusely diseased small vessels. In this short case presentation, we will show how we use the guide catheter extension in trying to cross a calcified lesion in the setting of an acute myocardial infarction and we will demonstrate a small technical caveat that all interventionists can use when they are facing difficult situation getting stent across the lesion. This case is of a 69-year-old lady who presented to our hospital 36 hours after the onset of severe symptoms of chest pain, dyspnea, and vomiting. When she came, she was in acute pulmonary edema. Her blood pressure was 107 over 70. She had marked elevation of blood sugar and diabetic ketoacidosis. She also had low-grade fever and starting sepsis because of severe urinary tract infection. Her bedside echo showed an ejection fraction of 30% and moderate mitral incompetence. Her electrocardiogram showed sinus tachycardia with a heart rate of 103 per minute and you can appreciate the first degree heart block. ST segment elevation in needs 2-3 AVF with slight elevation also in V6. You can see the reciprocal depression in leads 1 AVL with a tall R in V2 suggesting a posterior and inferior infarction with probable culprit of the right coronary artery. This is the diagnostic angiogram of her right coronary artery. The three arrows point to the long segment of diffuse disease and calcification in the proximal and mid RCA. And as you can see, the site of the occlusion harbors a mix of thrombus and calcium. You can also appreciate the dense calcification that's involving the LED and diagonal branches. We cannulated the right coronary from the start with a GR4 guiding catheter from the right radial approach because we, suge we suspected that the culprit would be the right coronary artery. We could cross the lesion with a run-through hypercoat wire and we inflated a 2O by 25 millimeter semi-compliant balloon across the lesion. This is the angiogram after balloon dilatation. You can appreciate that there is a significant residual stenosis at the site of the balloon dilatation, as well as some dissection at the site of the occlusion. And you can also appreciate some distal embolization in the posterolateral branch of the right coronary artery, but we still could have TIMI3 flow just after the balloon dilatation. And because we had a significant residual narrowing, we decided to inflate further for better lesion preparation using 2.5 by 15 non-compliant balloon. This is the balloon being inflated at the site of the residual stenosis. And, and now you can appreciate the extensive diffuse calcification that's involving the proximal, mid and distal segments of the vessel. And this is the result that we got after the 
non-compliant balloon dilatation, we can see now that we have good distal flow and the significant residual narrowing has disappeared and even the dissection looks better and we thought that by that time the vessel is ready for stenting. We tried to deliver a stent across the lesion. We had the Zeitz Alpine 275 by 33. But as you can see here, the stent didn't even cross the proximal site of the occlusion. And we, despite what seemed to be adequate lesion preparation, We tried to place a body wire to help us cross the occluded segment. We placed a BMW wire in the posterior descending artery. But as you can see, this didn't help at all. We tried again with larger non-compliant balloon inflations at the lesion and proximally, but we were still unable to deliver the stent. So we used the guide catheter extension. We had a guideliner 6 French and we placed in the proximal part of the right coronary artery and we tried to deliver the stent. As you can see, this time the stent could barely cross the proximal part of the lesion, but we were still unable to deliver the stent completely across the lesion with the guideliner in the proximal RCA. So we had to be more aggressive with the guideliner. We adopted the technique which is called GAIN, Guideliner Anchor Inflated Non-Compliant Balloon that was described by Singh and colleagues in 2011. Uh, where the guideliner is advanced over a balloon uh, and then the balloon is withdrawn and the stent is advanced we had a small modification that we advanced the guideliner over the stent that was just in the mid RCA and once the guideliner became in the mid RCA in a more advanced position that time we were able to overcome the resistance offered by the calcified lesion and delivered the stent at the lesion. Here you can see we had some good guiding backup support. We could advance the guideliner over the stent that was just in the mid RCA. Now the guideliner is in the mid is RCA and we could advance the stent well beyond the lesion into the distal RCA. And after we treated the distant segment of the right coronary, we had to cover the entire proximal and mid segments of the right coronary. So it ended up with a metal jacket spanning almost uh, most of the right coronary artery. But you can see the optimal final result and a TME3 distal flow in the vessel. So the learning point in this procedure is related to the guideliner. In those situations where rotablation is not available or cannot be used because of a myocardial infarction, as in this patient, guideliner is your best friend. If the lesion is proximal, then proximal position of the guideliner will probably be enough. 
but if the lesion is too distal, then you can use a balloon or a stent as an anchor to advance the guide liner deeper into the vessel into a more advanced position. And from that advanced position, you can be able to deliver your stent as distal as you want in the vessel.